Welcome back to the cult. My name is Saucebreaker. Buildings are essential in helping you grow your cult and provide many different functions. Some are obvious on how they help, but others seem a bit more niche. In this ranking, I will rank the buildings based off of their final form, meaning that the mine and the lumber yard, I will only be talking about their upgraded second version. If there's anything interesting about the other forms, I'll mention them as well. I will be ranking these based on how useful they are, if you'll be using them a lot, or if it makes your life easier. That also means I won't be talking about the decorations. A, I don't make the rules here, even though I do. Just not, not this video. With all that being said, let's get into the list. First up is going to be the Grand Shelter. Our first building we'll be taking a look at is the shelter from the sleeping bag. This allows your followers to have a place to sleep at night. While the first and second level of the shelter can break after a while, the third level will never break on you. It even collects devotion. While you're stuck with level 1 and 2, you do have a choice with the last level, one that we'll be taking a look at a little bit later. The Grand Shelter is a fine building, but I think it's heavily outclassed. C2. Next up, Shared Shelter. The one they told you not to worry about. This is an upgrade from the shelter and allows you to have three followers to sleep in this at once, and it never breaks. This is pretty much just a better version of the Grand Shelter without the Devotion Collection. This is pretty much a must-have if you have a cult that is huge, and you don't want to give up a huge chunk of the area for beds. You know, unless you want us to expand our camp. Wink wink. S tier. Do I smell something cooking? Death be damned, our glorious leader can work a grill though. The cooking fire is also one of the first buildings you get and you can't build any more afterwards. This allows the lamb to cook up to 12 meals at a time and serve them to their followers or even himself if he wants to. Since you will be using this one for a while, it can let you eat food for a bit, a buff here and there. I'm gonna place this at B tier. Now the kitchen is in a different tree from the cooking fire, but it basically does the same thing, but lets a follower cook the food. The kitchen also has a larger capacity than the cooking fire with 30 slots. So if you couldn't tell, this is S tier. Deadass outclasses the cooking fire. It's basically a blast furnace. Oh my goodness, our beloved follower is dead. We must give him a proper burial. Leave him in this pit. The body pit lets you bury a follower so they don't rot in the open. The grave is a lot better for decoration, though these two are outclassed by later buildings. Easier. Ooh, damn. This basic ass Taco Bell joke is hitting right now. Ah! The outhouse allows your followers a place to go number one or two, maybe even three if something's wrong. I'm sensing a pattern here with these buildings. At level one, it holds four chocolate, but at level two, it holds 14. A very good upgrade and useful if you don't want to run around looking for remains. A tier. Taking it one step further, the janitor station allows your followers to clean up their messes and even clean up the outhouse. This one isn't going to wow you with what it can do, but it's a massive quality of life once you build it. S tier. Go to jail. Bonk. The prison allows you to place followers in jail, usually when a follower is sent. We can't have those pesky thoughts make you think this cult is a cult. No, 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 it's the best thing out there. While you might be using this quite a bit in the early game, since you won't have all your resources gathered up, after a while, you would be able to make most followers happy, and the prisons will be less and less useful after a while. Keep one just in case, though, this is the tier. Also, if the building is too much, you can always just kill them. The propaganda speakers let you speak to the people, and they will work and pray 20% faster. However, you will need to fuel it with gold bars, and gold bars ain't cheap. Sure, you can make them work to produce gold bars faster for this to work and continue on the cycle, but after a while, you're gonna forget about these as you're gonna use those bars on something much better. D tier. The demonic summoning circle lets you convert a follower into a demon so they can join you for a crusade. I have a wonderful opinion on this building. This building is as literally as valuable as the summer ants. This building is nothing. It serves zero purpose. You should destroy it now. To be honest, I never use this because the demons aren't that crazy. They're pretty much like a small buff in regards to a crusade. Plus, you could just get the relic to summon one for free without having to convert them at all. F tier. <laughs> Ugh. 
<laughs> the, the healing bay is a building where the sick and the injured can be treated with some camilla flowers it's pretty simple and very useful so you don't have to wait for them to recover and it's pretty instant stm i wrote marg instead of the morgue just fun fact the morgue allows a follower to place dead followers bodies in it from three to six bodies at a time it will need to be emptied to prevent illnesses though however it's pretty useful especially when you have a bunch of old people die on your long crusades so they don't just rot on the floor me too oh it's me generic scary boys the crypt we're in the crypt the crypt is pretty much just a better version of the grave since it can just hold so many dead people in it. It's a godsend. Not that I have a lot of dead people or anything, although it may be rare for followers to stay dead. If you do have a few dead that you don't want to res or just forget about them, this is a new place for them. Easy. Oh, you think you're stylish? Hmm? Think you got what it takes to outmatch our leader? Or me? While at our tailor, you can do just that. This place is where you'll find the hottest clothing and nowhere else. Yes, I checked it. And for that, it will be S tier. Up next, we have the leader's tent. It's just your house, and only important in the mode where sleep matters. F tier for everyone else, but S tier for that one guy that plays on that mode. And no, it will only be appearing in F tier, not S. <laughs> it's not good enough, Scott Free this time. Pay me. Next up, we have the farm plot. As its name implies, this lets you put a plot down to plant stuff. It's farming, dude. Like, where else is this gonna go but S tier? Next up is the farmer station. Now, hang on, I'm gonna find a new word other than let's or allow. The farmer station grants the right to tend to the farms for your followers and at level 2, allows them to put seeds in the chest for you to collect. A really great building since you can have your followers farm food and other goods for you without having to be in there. S tier. Oh boy. A trap scarecrow. One of my favorites. The scarecrow prevents birds from stealing seeds from your plots. Those pesky birds. There is an upgrade that adds a bear trap to catch these birds. I know. Makes sense. Who are these birds? Only God knows, but these traps can only hold one bird at a time, so it's not that crazy. To be honest, you will only need one, and the rest can just be scarecrows. Easier. The compost bin converts that good grass into fertilizer. Alright, I guess, but it takes a lot of grass to turn it to fertilizer though, and you can use that on food. Easier. However, the natural barrier turns your dead followers into fertilizer. Ooh, ah, daddy lie. <laughs> oh my god, I fucking hated that. Why did I even say it, bro? Why did I even put it in the script? To be honest, this is a really good way to get rid of followers if you don't have a lot of space for them. This is what I meant earlier that most followers aren't going to stay dead for a while. They're going to be used for our food. So if you don't have space for them or just have a lot of dead bodies, this is an A to your building. Why they even call this a harvest totem? It's just a windmill. This windmill just speeds up the process of growing plants by 33%. And if you upgrade it, it generates devotion. How and why this generates devotion makes as much sense as an upload schedule to me. It doesn't. If you don't upgrade this, it's still pretty good for the farm since it can cover a good chunk of the area. C tier. Now I'm giving you a great value for these next entries. Next up we have the seed silo and the fertilizer silo. I'm grouping these two together and the storages since I have the same thing to say about them. Both of these buildings grant the followers to get seeds and fertilizers to use on the farm. And whatever is needed for those silos, you can just deposit it in. However, with the addition of these massive storage buildings that was recently added, it can let you deposit even more materials into them and your followers will send off those materials into the smaller silos. It just makes these buildings the best thing to have in your cult. S tier. The lumber yard and stone mine both generate wood and stone once a follower starts working on them. Starting at 50 for both, then after being upgraded to 100 for how much you can generate. It is needed, however, if you make enough of these, you can pretty much forget them for a while 
And with that surplus, it can be used for something even better. B tier. And that something is the refinery. The refinery can convert basic resources into advanced ones. In other words, this can make wood into wooden planks and stone into stone bricks. These resources are going to be required for later building, so it's best to get these ASAP. S tier. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. S tier. You need and have to build the shrine and this temple in this game. Moving on. The confession boost lets you hear a follower out to increase their loyalty, and later in the game, their sin. It's funny to listen to your followers just give out the same info I wouldn't have, even if Batman beat it out of me. I pretty much stayed crippled since I never gave out the info. You can only use this once per day for the loyalty and the sin, and it increases for a follower is a massive bonus, so you should use this as much as you can. A tier. Le Missionary can allow up to 3 followers if upgraded on a mission to collect whatever resource you want to get them. However, just know there is a chance for them to never come back. Ooh, I have mixed feelings on this. While yes, the building is nice to have, followers can get a resource that you might not have or don't care to get. Sooner or later, you can just get those resources somewhere else and you'll forget about this building and it'll be nothing more than just a faded memory. One that uh, you, you deeply miss and you wish you can go back to. <sighs> C tier. The tabernacle lets a follower that aren't worshipping on the daily to pray throughout the day to get devotions. I hate this. I think this one is so useless. These can barely hold anything and at level 3 it only holds 40 devotion. Your level 1 shrine can hold 50 and even then, by the time you're able to get this upgrade, you will be at shrine level 4, which can hold 175 devotion. So it's like not even worth it. F tier. God, I wish I didn't build these, man. I built only two, and I think that's still more than what's needed. The offering statue allows followers to leave items for you to grab. The items are random though. It can be anything from a fish to a refined item. Why the hell are you hiding this from me and only giving me here? This is pretty much just a loot box or just a gambling machine. So if you're into that, this might be something that you want to have. D tier? Here's a newer building, the Empowered Shrine of Disciples. This building lets your followers pray and give you boosts while you're on a crusade. A really good building that I wish was in the game a long time ago. It's really cool and to have your followers help in a better way, Demon Summoning Circle, is really good. C tier. And our second newest building, the Collected Shrine of Disciples. This building exists because collecting devotion from buildings are annoying. It just collects all devotion from the buildings in its radius all in one spot. I guess it's good for that, but really? Do you really have that many buildings? E2. <laughs> the drink house. This swag place lets you, I mean a follower, brew drinks for you to generate sand. It's a really good way to get sin, and some of your followers have some goopy shit to say to you. S tier. Just know they can get a little messy. The mating tent and hatchery. Sex! S tier. Because you can breed new followers. The drum circle lets you play a rhythm game to generate sins for a follower. It's a fun way to build sin, but it takes a bit more effort than other ways. Still, it's really fun, and what's not to love? A tier. And voila! This list was a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, but as always, here is the full list that we just went over. Of course, this is all my opinion, so if you disagree with any of these, I'll ask your server at the restaurant to forget your drink and remember to join the cult, and until then, thanks for watching.